12 steps on how to use the information from the What the Health documentary to your benefit as well as the benefit of your patients. Thank you for tuning into my channel and I wanted to do my first colleague corner video on the documentary what the health most people are talking about what lifestyle changes they need to make um, and I think we need to do a better job at supporting them tip one educate yourself on plant-based diets don't just come up with your own personal views on it do the research anti-inflammatory effects of those types of diets mediterranean diets as we all know have a great benefit on our lifespan and our quality of life we probably have been recommending the dash diet that was studied by mayo clinic or developed by mayo clinic what is the basis of it plants so we could do more research on plant-based diets so that we're better equipped at our patient appointments. Focus on the macronutrients, but also on some of the micronutrients, the amino acids. A lot of us have been taught that you cannot get complete proteins. Go back to learning about what that's about and you'll find that there are ways to have plants uh, contribute to um, all the amino acids that you need. For example, rice and beans. Tip two. Don't get defensive. We fear what we do not understand. Don't get defensive and say, well, this is not what I learned, so this can't be true. You may need to ask questions and go look for the research and see what the data is. Even consider jotting down what your patient might be telling you and letting them know at the next follow-up, maybe you can get back to them. Write it into their chart as something to follow up on or maybe have them come back earlier. Tip three know the data maybe make a goal to skim at least two abstract articles a week that um, will either refute or support plant-based living what studies should you maybe look at there are studies about having more than two eggs per week go back to looking at some of the red meat recommendations warnings cautions look at the cancers associated with smoked meats tip four Challenge yourself. Try new foods. Try a different restaurant. Make it a fun experience. Challenge yourself to maybe have plant-based living for the next couple weeks. Do it for your patients that are um, maybe trying to make that transition in their life. I think it's a great option, a healthy option for you. There are many different restaurants now that are offering vegan options. Have almond milk in your Starbucks instead. Don't get a Caesar salad. Get something else. Um, there are certain restaurants that are plant-based only. My favorite one in Kansas City is Cafe Gratitude. That's when I was first introduced to all these different nut cheeses. I could have sworn there was Parmesan or some kind of cream. It was all made from nuts, fruit, vegetables. Um, great experience. I, the other day, discovered this great recipe by this lady on YouTube. The link is below. The only thing that I changed from her recipe is that I added Italian season on top of the vegan protein crumbles. By mistake, I, I got um, soy protein or something. Um, so that's the only thing that I changed on, on her recipe, but great lasagna. We will be shocked that there's no meat and no cheese in there great great recipe so explore have fun with it gives you a reason to venture out try new restaurants have a date try new options tip five start asking your patients about their diets during your appointments even if it's just about breakfast for instance when I want to know somebody's fiber content in their food I start off by asking them what's your typical breakfast okay do you have a snack between that and lunch what's your snack how about your lunch dinner any snacks in between what are your juices or your drinks and that gives me a quick snapshot on how they do with their nutrition at least yesterday and I know not every day is the same but when you ask about the diet it opens up the floor for so many different discussions and some of us are just like no not more stuff to talk about in these 20 minutes but it gives you an item that you can follow up on and at least provoke the patient to thinking more about things 
Tip six, try not to bombard the patient where they can think about three goals that they would like to see change by their next visit. That's a quick way of talking about the diet during your appointment. Tip seven, a multivitamin is something I think should be considered for every one of your patients. If somebody's making a transition in their diet, they may be lacking certain nutrients as they're trying to explore foods. Um, so a multivitamin is definitely essential. I still recommend a multivitamin for our meat eaters because some of us don't eat enough fruit or vegetable anyway. Tip eight. Go ahead and start recommending plant-based diets. You have the information that you need, you've done the research, you see for yourself maybe the benefits of the diet. Start recommending it to patients. Maybe we can be more bold about it. We don't have to stick to one particular food pyramid. We should be careful where the sources of our information and diagrams are coming from. Start recommending plant-based diets. Tip nine, start thinking about how you can encourage breastfeeding. That's one of the few times that um, if you're trying to have a plant-based life that you're definitely depending on another mammal for your nutrition. If we're trying to decrease the amount of animal products in one system, what are babies supposed to consume if they're not breastfeeding? If we're trying to reduce the amount of cow's milk used in infants, we need to start looking at breastfeeding. We definitely need to start finding ways to support this and some of the challenges that are associated with breastfeeding. Consider getting breastfeeding certification if you're a primary care doctor or OBGYN. Um, just a couple tips sometimes can make a great difference. Tip 10. When you're given recommendations or maybe even a handout and you're wanting to support plant-based living, talk about the other healthy options. So if there's a recommendation on there that you didn't put for three glasses of milk, talk about the equivalent in plant-based products. So if you need this much calcium from milk, according to this society, this is how much spinach you'll have to consume and it's a whole lot. Or this is how much almond milk, hemp seed milk, all these types of options, it's helpful to know what the equivalents are for plant-based living so you could better educate your patients. Tip 11. I don't recommend slandering meat eaters. People do not need to necessarily feel bad about choices that they didn't necessarily make. A lot of people may be in a certain diet regimen based on tradition, based on culture, based on just things that they thought were okay. Um, we talked about having things in moderation. Some things are preferred to not be in the diet at all and we need to start talking about that. But you don't need to attack the person. Um, just be there to make suggestions and show the facts, share the information that you may have studied. Tip 12. Medicine is our specialty, but where did medication and medicine come from? It came from our food, came from the ground up. Even the chemicals, to some degree, they came from this earth. We need to be more well-versed in plant-based living, vegetable-based living, whatever you want to call it. We need to get back to our grassroots and know a little bit more about it. Like this video if you think this was helpful. Subscribe if you want to hear more. More of these type of videos, more about health topics, career, or just whatever random thing.